All right, thank you. All right, so as a recap again for our first um, topic, um, we're addressing the idea of mass percent. So what is the mass of the solution or the solute over the mass of the entire solution? Um, things to watch out for again for this is the denominator. If the phrasing of the question says, here's the solvent and the solute, then we're going to have to add both of those. If the question is phrased, here is the mass of the entire solution, then we don't need to add the solute. It's already factored in that number. So um, just for the recording, I'm mentioning uh, in the example here, it was phrased as, here's the solute, here's the solvent. So the denominator, it was 10 plus 65. If I change the phrasing to, um, you mix 10 grams of ethanol with a total mass of a solution of 65, if it's phrased that way, then it's just going to be 10 over 65, uh, which would change our answer. All right, so just something to keep an eye for with mass percent. Um, the next one is called parts per million, which is very similar to mass percent. The key difference um, is step one is the same. It'll be the mass of the solute over the mass of the entire solution. What's different is step two. Parts per million is a unit of concentration that's often used in environmental science. <clears throat> so when they talk, they're talking about like amount of pollution in water or amount of pollution in air, this is often the, uh, <clears throat> the unit that they would use. So um, keep in mind that the first portion <clears throat> is the same as mass percent. It's the second part. So instead of multiplying by 100, we're multiplying by a million. Uh, the example here says, what if you have 480 grams of sodium chloride and it's dissolved in four liters of water? Now, when th the solute is very easy, it's 480, but then we're given volume of water. There's something at the top here that's gonna help us, not just for this topic, not just for parts per million, but for all the other calculations. It turns out that based on the density of water, pure water, a milliliter of water will weigh one gram. That's kind of the rough estimation of it. It's some sl small amount of error depending on temperature. But the, the idea here again is that if I have a milliliter of water, it is one gram. So if I have one liter of water, doesn't it mean I have a thousand gram? So just keep that conversion factor in mind. In this problem, they said they dissolved the sodium chloride in four liters of water. Isn't four liters 4,000 milliliters? So if it's 4,000 milliliters, the conversion factor is one is to one, from milliliters to grams. 4,000 milliliters means you have 4,000 grams. Now you'll notice at the bottom, it says, um, for the calculation, 480 grams is the solute divided by 4,480 for the total solution. Because don't we need to add your solute and your solvent, the mass of those two components? And that gives us um, a ratio, but you have to, what's different this time around is we're multiplying it by a million. So that's why the final answer is 1.07 times 10 to the fifth parts per million. In terms of the unit, just you can write ppm to signify uh, parts per million. So mass percent and parts per million, very similar. The only difference is what you multiply it with. All right, the next one is a very straightforward calculation <clears throat> because the name is the formula, grams per liter. And in this problem, they're saying, what is the mass of the solute and what's the total volume of the whole solution? So in, in this case, uh, we're given 12 grams of the solute and they're telling us that the volume of the whole solution is 4,000 milliliters. And 4,000 milliliters, when turned to liters, remember the shortcut is, uh, well, the actual calculation is divide by 1,000 or move the decimal place three spots to the left. So 4,000 milliliters is point, uh, sorry, four liters. So with that, we have a um, solution in the bottom. It's 12 over four, giving us three grams per liter. So um, the unit is the formula, G over L, grams per liter. So this one, out of the, the four new things I'm discussing today, is a bit more straightforward. All right, the last one is called mole fraction. All the other ones are based on mass. This one's based on the number of moles. Uh, for this, I'll show the solution 
I think I can annotate the screen. Yep. Okay, so in this problem, there or the, the big picture of mole fraction is instead of how much does it weigh, it's how many do we have of one component compared to the whole thing. So it is still a part of a whole. That's still the, the big idea behind it. But now instead of how much it's weighing, it's how many there are, the count of it. Um, in this problem, they're giving us 30 grams of KMNO. So I'm gonna write that, 30 of, of KMNO4. But we need to turn that into moles. So since all of this is about moles, I looked at the molar mass of KMNO4 and it is 158.03. I'll just put 158. It's hard to write all the numbers on the screen. When I divide those two, it's giving me 0.189, the number of moles of KMNO4. So um, I guess at the very least, let me write that, KMNO4. We'll do the same thing for water. I'll write it over here, 20 grams of water. And the molar mass of water, H2O, is 18 grams per mole. Per mole. Um, when calculated, we'll end up with 11.11 .11 moles. And this is for water. So now we have um, our two information. Now what we can do is find the mole fraction. For part A, it's asking what is the mole fraction of KMNO4? So whichever one you're looking for, that's the one that's gonna go on top. Um, so mole fraction of KMNO4 would be 0.189 divided by, and then at the bottom is the total moles. So we have to add those two uh, data points that we have, 0.189 plus the moles of water that's in that solution. If calculated correctly, we're gonna end up with a mole fraction, and I'll just write it here. The symbol of mole fraction is this uh, Greek symbol that looks like an X, a cursive X, um, and it is, the value is 0 0.0167. There is no unit uh, for mole fraction because it's, it's the ratio of how many of you know one component over the entire thing. So there's there's no unit for it. The unit gets canceled out. All right. So this is um, the last of the new topics. On the, well, and we're going to do a review. I'll do a, a quick demo collecting data right now. So the quiz on Thursday for your periods of fourth period um, is going to be mostly math, the things I'm explaining today and the, the ones I explained last week, molarity and dilution. Um, but there will be some concepts, but everything is on that PowerPoint. Like things I'll ask is gonna be based on what is discussed on um, our Zoom session and the practice problem that I am asking you to like you know, write out. So make sure you check that. Like questions can come out of those practice problems. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna move the computer and do a quick demonstration. Here it is. Not sure for right now. Okay, so I'm hoping you guys can see and let me know, like in the chat, if you can't see the setup that I have here. You might not see me, that's fine, as long as you can hear me. Um, the setup that we have here, we have our um, analytical, or our balance from school. So I was able to bring some of our supplies um, last week. That way, from here on, whenever I'm doing a demo, you know, I can do it in here in the kitchen. Uh, we have our way boat, familiar equipment we use. I'm going to zero it first. And we're going to be using just table salt, NCO. And the target mass that I'd like to weigh is 10 grams. So I don't know if you can see the number. I'll move it closer once I have it uh, measured. So I'm going to try to add 10 grams. Double check this. Seven. 
that was there. Now 9.6, I'm gonna slow it down a bit. I'm a little over, let me pick up some. So a little bit more. Perfect. All right. So as you can see, oh shift it a little bit. Um, I had it almost at 10. There it is. Right. So I don't know if you can see the number there, but it says 10 grams of uh, the salt that we're using. And what I also have, let me just put it back. Um, in this beaker is 400 milliliters of water. So if I lay it flat, it'll be a bit more obvious. Um, isn't 400 milliliters when converted to liters 0.4? So that's the value of, um, of water. So we have 0.4 liters or 400 milliliters. I'm going to add our solute for now. So I'm adding our solute to our solvent. And then our task is um, actually, let me, let me do that first. So I'm adding our solute to our solvent. Now, keep in mind from last week when we talked about the idea of solubility, every compound has its own property with, when it comes to solubility. Some are very soluble. And back in January, there was a you know a quiz that we took that I had asked you to remember as much of the solubility rules for different compounds. Uh, chlorides are pretty soluble with a few exceptions um, to it. And as you can see in this, like it's already starting to dissolve, although the, the water is not very hot. Sodium chloride is one of the, the exceptions. Um, when we're looking at the solubility curve in the beginning of this session, the majority of the compounds tend to be more soluble the uh, hotter the, the temperature of this solution. But because sodium chloride is so soluble that at any temperature it will dissolve. And some other key things to remember, by mixing it, I'm increasing the kinetic energy. By increasing the kinetic energy, I'm increasing the solubility. So that's something that... Um, you know, that we could review from last week. All right, I'm gonna pause and looking at this, for the most part, there's maybe like a few specks that's in the bottom uh, with a few, with a bit more mixing it all. Uh, it'll be done, it'll be dissolved. So now the question that I have for you guys is, what if we have this solution where I added 10 grams of NaCl that I weighed to 400 milliliters of our water. You could be asked to solve for the five different concentrations, molarity, uh, mass percent, parts per million, grams per liter, and then mole fraction. So let's start with, so again, that's, that's our visual, that's the data we're gonna be using. I'm gonna move back to my desk so I can go through these five different calculations. And then I will open it up so you'll have an opportunity for questions. Okay, starting with, um, I'm going to change the screen now so I can the whiteboard. All right, let's start with molarity. Remember that molarity is the number of moles over a certain volume, moles per liter. And the the one thing that we got to do is we need to turn that mass first because we know it's moles over liter, but we got to solve for moles. I'm going to solve it kind of off to the side. We have 10 grams of NaCl. And the molar mass of NaCl is 58.44. So using the periodic table, um, you can find the molar mass of sodium and chlorine combined is 58.44. That will give us 0.171 moles. So I'm going to need that number. The other thing that I got to consider would be the volume. So we had 400 milliliters of uh, water that I used in that container. Keep in mind that 400 milliliters is also equal to um, 0 0.4 of a liter. 
the way to remember that is you move the decimal place three spots or you can divide the, the volume by a thousand uh, to turn it into liters. Now we have two or two values. I can combine the two now, 0.171 divided by 0.4 and that will give us a molarity of uh, 0.428. As always, you want to include units, so I'm going to put capitalized M for our units, or you can write moles over liter. Uh, so that's our first one. That's the molarity, or the con um, oftentimes when they say what's the concentration, they're referring to molarity. But for this quiz, I will specify. I'll ask you to solve for the, the specific different types of, of concentration units. Um, so we have our first answer, molarity. Um, we're going to have two. Remember this number because we're going to use that later, 0.171 moles. I'll, I have it on my paper, but just keep in mind that we've solved for the moles of, of our NACL. Okay, the second one and the third one, in fact, are very similar. So I'm going to have, I'm going to write our mass percent and our parts per million pretty much on the same slide here. First, let me solve for mass percent. The formula for it is what's the mass of the solute over the mass of the entire solution. Remember that our solute is 10 grams, but now we got to have to do that um, conversion where for every one milliliter of water, since our solvent is, is water, um, we can use this conversion that a milliliter of water is one gram. So it's a very easy conversion of one is to one. All you do is change the unit. If I have 400 milliliters, doesn't mean I have 400 grams because of that one is to one conversion. But then that's just the solvent. Didn't I add the solute to it? So if mass percent says, what's the mass of the solute over the mass of the entire solution, that doesn't mean it's gonna be 400 plus. Because it's a percentage, we have to multiply it by 100. So with that, if calculated correctly, we're gonna end up with 2.44%. That would be the mass percent of NaCl in the entire solution. Now, parts per million would be almost exactly the same setup, but what I'll do is I'm gonna erase a portion of our solution here, and uh, of course, erase our answer, and now replace that with multiplying it by a million, one times 10 to the six. You can write out the whole thing as one million. With that, because that's really the only difference between the two. Is it a percentage times 100, or is it parts per million times a million? Uh, with that, that will give us an answer of 2.44 times 10 to the fourth power. Oh, the unit for this, sorry, not a lot of space. It's PPM, parts per million. So now, the um, again, mass percent, it's almost exactly the same. The only difference, let me spotlight the difference, is what's happening here. Mass percent, we, we multiply by 100. Parts per million, what you're seeing on the screen, is multiplied by a million. It's kind of the key difference there. All right, let's try the remaining two. So let me clear our screen. Uh, based on our demo, we could calculate grams per liter very easily because we had 10 grams of NaCl, and wasn't the total volume 400 milliliters. I can't plug in 400 directly, I have to turn it into liters. Isn't 400 milliliters the same as 0.4 of a liter? So with that, we'll end up with 25 grams over a liter. And the unit for it is the formula. You write G over capitalized L. All right, yeah, grams per liters tends to be one of the more straightforward ones. The last one is mole fraction. So here, that. Um, mole fraction, again, is this weird X symbol to it. And we know that um, for this, how about, let's focus on the mole fraction of NaCl. Because I could also ask you to solve what's the mole fraction of water. And I'll talk about what, how would it be different uh, for that. Um, if we're focusing on NaCl, then I need the moles of NaCl, but I also need the moles of water. In the earlier example, when we calculated molarity, we found that NaCl is 
0.71 moles. So we did this calculation. How did we get that? 10 grams, which was our data of NaCl, divided by 58.44 grams per mole, giving us 0.171 moles. Now, I got to do the same thing for water. In this uh, example, there was 400 milliliters of water. And 400 milliliters is another way of saying I have 400 grams of water. I'm just going to change the unit. How do I turn it into moles? Isn't it 18 grams per mole, roughly? On your quiz, make sure to use the more exact value. I just don't have the periodic table in front of me right now. Um, I think it's like 18.02. So with that, 400 divided by 18 gives us a um, number of moles of 22.2. 22.2 2 moles. So now I have our two numbers that I'll need for, for this calculation. So if it's asking me for the mole fraction of NaCl, I'm going to put the number of moles of NaCl in the top, 0.171. And then in the bottom, it'll be 0.171 again, but I'm adding that number to um, number of moles of water, 22.2. The idea is that it's part over the entire thing, part over whole. When uh, calculated correctly, you could, you'll get a small decimal. That's not fine. That's great. 7.59 times 10, 10 to the negative 3, or 0 0.00759. That would be the, the answer for it. For mole fraction, there is no unit because the unit actually gets canceled out because um, it's really just the relationship of the number of of one component over the whole thing. So there's really, there's no answer, or there's no unit for your answer. All right, with that, um, actually might as well review since we have some time here. I'm gonna clear the whole thing. What if you were asked to do a dilution? So let me draw our setup. Remember that in our beaker, um, there was a volume of 400 milliliters. I guess I'll put it on the side. 100 milliliters was the total volume. And based on our calculation uh, earlier, we determined that our mass, or sorry, our molarity, the answer, it was 0 0.428. That was our answer from, from earlier. Now, what if, for question, for mole fraction parts per million, do we always have to write out answer in scientific notation? It depends on the it depends on the answer. If it's like a really small number, then you do need to because you might remember we have to factor sig figs. So if it's like point zero 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 a whole bunch of zeros, then it's better to like write it in scientific notation. It's just the example we saw ended up with the scientific notation. All right. Um, so this is are what we have in, in the demo, like the beaker demonstration that we're showing you had 400 milliliters of water, or the total solution. And um, when we calculated the molarity, we figured out that that uh, salt amount there was 0.428. What if I take, say, 100 milliliters of this? So now, I'm gonna kind of just guesstimate this about 100 milliliters. I transfer to an empty container. But then what if I add, let's say, 300 more of water? So I'm adding 300 of water, but I had 100 that was added from, um, from the first one, right, from the original. Then in total, I'm gonna have a new volume of 400. So at the end, my new volume is 400. With that, based on the drawing that I have here, we can set up our dilution calculation. Our M1 is, so remember the formula just to, to help remind you, M1 V1, M2 V2. This was the Zoom discussion from last week. M1 means what is the original concentration? The original concentration is 0.428. V1 is how much did we transfer from that original? We transferred 100 milliliters, 
Let's convert that to liters. And again, the simple way of going about it is you move the decimal place three spots to the left. So then we move 100 milliliters is 0.1 of a liter. It's another way of writing it. So now on the other side, M2 is what we're looking for. We're looking for the new concentration. But based on the drawing that I have for the second beaker, our new volume is 400 milliliters, right? Because we had we transferred 100 and then we added 300 of water to it. So let me fix this 0 0.4 of a liter. Okay. I mean, you can do the calculation right now, but it's looking like it's going to be something close to like point um, one, then it'll be point zero nine or something like that. Uh, but you could you can solve for M2. So I just, because this one, it's not something that we tested, but we can solve for the new concentration. Okay, I'm going to pause the recording. Stop the share and then we can